for Nora. We begin with the blast of dangerous wintry weather and Arctic temperatures hitting much of the country this weekend, with more than 6 million Americans under winter weather alerts now through Sunday. Many heading home from Thanksgiving celebrations will have to contend with this heavy snow and bone-chilling cold. These snowy scenes are from Erie, Pennsylvania, where lake effect snow is coming down fast and making a mess of the roads, as you see there. Much of western New York is now under a state of emergency, with parts of the region bracing for up to six feet of snow. Officials warn that driving during this storm could be nearly impossible. The Buffalo Bills put out a call for people to help shovel their stadium before Sunday's game against the San Francisco 49ers. Nearly 50,000 flights are scheduled for Sunday, and the weather could cause delays for many holiday travelers. Meteorologist Paul Hagen of CBS News Bay Area is tracking it all. Good evening, Paul. Nancy, good evening. The storm system that brought the rain and snow to the northeast on Thanksgiving is now moving out, but the lake effect snow in its wake is going to continue for a few more days because of what has moved in behind that storm system, and that is an Arctic air mass. Cold air plunging to the south out of Canada, bringing an early taste of winter essentially to the eastern two-thirds of the United States. And that cold air is one component of the lake effect snow machine. The other is the relatively warmer waters of the Great Lakes, about a 20-degree difference, and as that cold there blows out over the open water it warms up slightly which makes it able to absorb a little bit more moisture but then as it blows over land and cools off again it has to drop that moisture which it does in these bands of intense snowfall it is going to add up in a hurry as we head through the rest of the weekend forecast models indicating anywhere from one to two feet of total snowfall through sunday on a widespread basis with some communities hitting the jackpot with several feet of snow and they're going to be digging out in some cold temperatures about 10 to 20 degrees below average on saturday in the teens 20s and 30s for highs, and it's going to feel even colder with the wind factored in. Nancy, some communities are going to be feeling like it's below zero throughout the day on Saturday. Oh, that's not fun. Paul Hagen, thank you so much. Now to Black Friday. Bargains are out in force today, hitting the stores and shopping online. CBS's Nancy Chen reports one major retailer is getting big help from a music megastar. <laughs> With the leftovers put away, it's time for one of America's favorite pastimes, shopping. I like shopping in person, you know, getting to see how things look in real life. Retailers are working overtime to get shoppers to spend in store today, and they did early. Taylor Swift fans lined up overnight outside Target for exclusive in-store access to her official Eras tour book, as well as her Tortured Poets Department album with four bonus tracks. We're so sought after, and this tour and that album mean so much to us as Swifties. The bullseye hoping for a much-needed boost after falling short of earnings expectations last quarter. Rival Walmart, meanwhile, beat earnings expectations, with consumers spending on essentials like groceries instead of the discretionary items Target is better known for. According to annual reports, about 60% of Walmart's earnings come from groceries versus nearly 23% of Target's. Adding to Walmart's revenue, households with six-figure incomes looking for bargains, driving 75% of the company's gains. Analysts estimate sales to grow more than 3% this holiday season, but some will have to make sacrifices to make those purchases. 9% of shoppers say they'll put off essential bills to buy presents, and nearly a third who shopped on credit last year are still paying off their holiday balances. Consumers are really looking to make sure that they are stretching that dollar when it comes to holiday shopping, and so they are trying to avoid going into debt. More shoppers are also turning to buy now, pay later services this year. On Thanksgiving, use was up 10% over last year. But some experts caution to take it slow. If you end up taking on too many buy now, pay later, and you're paying these monthly bills, now you might not have enough cash to pay for your daily essentials, and then using your credit card to pay for those. So it's still putting you into debt. Now, if you're looking for winter gear, bedding, or linens, there might be better sales in January. And televisions will go on discount again closer to the Super Bowl in February, Nancy. Timing is everything, Nancy Chen. Thank you.
Breaking news now from Mar-a-Lago, where Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is meeting with President-elect Donald Trump over dinner tonight, according to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The CBC reports Canada sought out the meeting, and there's a lot to talk about. Trump has threatened Canada with 25% tariffs. CBS's Weijia Jiang is in West Palm Beach. Weijia, what are you learning? Well, Nancy, this meeting comes on the heels of a Wednesday phone call between President-elect Trump and Mexican President Claudia Scheinbaum as Trump threatens to impose tariffs on both North American neighbors. Prime Minister Trudeau has said the move would harm Americans. He is just one of many trying to get in front of Trump before he takes office. During a Thanksgiving Day celebration at Mar-a-Lago, ex-CEO Elon Musk sat next to President-elect Trump along with Melania and Barron Trump. These days, the pair appears to be inseparable, a long way from July 2022, when Musk posted, I don't hate the man, but it's time for Trump to hang up his hat and sail into the sunset. On Wednesday, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who once banned Trump from Facebook, had dinner with the president-elect at Mar-a-Lago. Trump's incoming deputy chief of staff, Stephen Miller. We'll see what comes of that. And Mark, obviously, he has his own interests and he has his own company and he has his own agenda. But he's made clear that he wants to support the national renewal of America under President Trump's leadership. During his first term, Trump threatened to ban TikTok and break up Google. He even sued several big tech companies alleging censorship. We're going to hold big tech very accountable. This is the first of numerous other lawsuits I assume that would follow. This time around, a long list of Silicon Valley billionaires poured money into the Trump campaign and flooded social media with congratulatory notes when he won. I think they're engaging in smart politics. I think what the public should see is that uh, folks who have access uh, often get preferential treatment from the Trump administration. Chris Lewis, who worked for the Obama campaign, is watching to see how Trump deals with issues like artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and ensuring competition for consumers. The public should care whether or not uh, the government is working on behalf of what's in the public interest versus what's good for large uh, monopoly corporations. Elon Musk even scored a position advising the incoming administration as head of the newly created Department of Government Efficiency, along with Republican businessman Vivek Ramaswamy. Next week, they are heading to Washington to meet with House Republicans to talk about slashing regulations and cutting the workforce across federal agencies. Nancy? Never a dull moment at Mar-a-Lago. Weijia Jiang, thank you. We're following a big development overseas tonight in Syria. Anti-government rebels have taken control of several neighborhoods in the city of Aleppo. Today's surprise attack is said to be the biggest offensive against the forces of President Bashar al-Assad since 2016. There has been instability in Syria since a civil war broke out there in 2011. The renewed fighting comes at a dangerously fragile moment 